I find it so interesting when people say that self-love is selfish because the truth is learning to love yourself is one of the least selfish things that you can do. And I'm going to talk to you today about exactly why that is. And then I'm going to teach you five simple ways that you can start working on your relationship with yourself and building that self-love today. If you're new here, Welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second and introduce yourself in the comment section below if you're back again. It's always good to have you here. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. The buttons are right down there. Either way, my name is Julia Christina and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of my incredible membership community, The Shift Society, where many of you who are here now are in The Shift Society and taking this work to a deeper level and being supported the whole way through. You can get more information about the Shift Society in the description below. I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And if you are confused when I said that loving yourself is the least selfish thing you can do, then let me ask you this. When you don't feel good about yourself, when you don't love yourself, who are you always thinking about? What did they mean by that? What does that say about me? Why am I not good enough? What's wrong with me? We are always focused on ourselves when we are feeling insecure about who we are because our sense of self is so determined by everyone and everything that is happening around us We are so scared of something going wrong and then us feeling terrible or it confirming a belief that we all that we already have that we're always kind of assessing and evaluating and judging ourselves based on again things that are happening around us and so we become so hyper focused on ourselves whereas when you love yourself when you feel secure in who you are you just don't really think about yourself Think about relationships that you have in your life. The relationships with other people where you feel that is solid and secure and you're like, this is a good relationship. You're not worried about it. You're not thinking about it. You're just kind of existing within it and living your life, you know, and doing your thing and you feel safe and secure in this relationship. You're not obsessing about it. But when you're in a relationship with someone where it's tenuous, where there's a lot of ups and downs, where it's insecure and unstable, what are you always thinking about? Oh my gosh, are they gonna leave me? Oh my gosh, like, what did they mean by that? What's gonna happen? And you're kind of anxious and you're nervous and you're trying to like, please or perfect or perform or whatever that is, you're always focused on that. Same goes for ourselves. When we feel good about ourselves, we don't think about ourselves all the time because it's not necessary. We're like, I'm good. I feel good about that. Now I can go on and spend my mental and emotional energy on other things like creating, contributing, um, cultivating, connecting. A lot of C's there. (laughs) But ultimately, things that offer more value to ourselves and to the world than sitting around and uh, wondering and worrying about whether or not we're good enough or whether or not we're lovable enough. So yeah, loving yourself is one of the least selfish things that you can do. And now let's talk about how to build our relationship with ourselves, how to build our self-love while also looking at some things that you might be unintentionally doing that are taking away from it or preventing you from being able to love yourself. And the first thing that builds self-love is to make and keep promises to yourself. Because I'm guessing that you are really good at making and keeping promises to other people. But when it comes to yourself, you're like, oh, well, I said I was going to get started on that. Or I said I was going to make time for that. Or I said I was going to invest myself in that. But, you know, I'll just do it later. Or I'll do it tomorrow. Or, you know, maybe this other thing I should do instead. Because whatever reason, I don't want that person to be mad at me. Or I don't want someone to think that I'm selfish by taking time for myself. Or investing in something that's important to me. Or whatever that is. That you're breaking promises to yourself. And like in any relationship, you start breaking promises all the time, the person is gonna stop trusting you and they're gonna stop feeling secure in that relationship. Same goes for ourselves. We think that it doesn't matter because no one, no one knows or no one's listening when we break a promise to ourselves, but you know who's listening? 
our brain. Our brain is listening when we break promises and make excuses and put things off that are important to us. And our brain says, well, I guess it's not important. So I guess it means I'm not important. And it's really hard to love someone that we don't think is important. Now, on that note, many of you are making huge commitments and huge promises and like, I'm going to start getting up every morning at 4 a.m. and I'm going to do my, you know, my miracle morning of like my journal and my meditating and my exercising and my smoothie making and I'm going to go out to the barn and I'm going to milk the cows so I'm going to have fresh unpasteurized milk, farm fresh milk for breakfast or whatever that is. <laughs> And I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. And then you get overwhelmed and your brain is like, holy cow, that is way too much. Let's do that later. And you keep putting it off. Now that's different. That is unrealistic expectations going from zero to a hundred overnight and knowing that that just our, our human brains don't do well with that. That if we try to take on too much, our brain is like, holy crap, that's way too hard. I can't do that. I can't maintain that. Um, that's going to feel terrible. <laughs> so let's not. What I'm talking about is making small promises to yourself. Promises that you can follow through on that just require a little bit of effort where you're like, you know what? I'm going to make this small promise, a promise that I can keep, right? That's the important part, a promise that I can keep. And I'm going to do that in order to build my relationship with myself, to show myself that I can trust myself. But make sure you're setting promises and making promises that you can keep. And as you do that, as you make these little promises to yourself and you keep them, it builds your relationship with yourself. It builds that self-love because we love people that we can rely on. We love people that do what they say that they're going to do, that we can trust. So that is something that you might not have been aware of that you're doing by breaking promises to yourself all the time that is really making it hard for you to love yourself that's really taking away from that. So the opposite is to make the small promises and keep them and do that often, not so that it's overwhelming, but that so you can get yourself into kind of a groove of fulfilling the promises that you make to yourself. The next thing that builds self-love is listening to yourself and your needs and respecting that. It doesn't mean that you do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it and don't care about how it affects everybody else or anybody else. That's not going to be helpful and it's not super conducive to having healthy relationships in your life if you're just always kind of bulldozing through and me, 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 me all the time. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not self-love. That is self-interest, right? Like that is self-indulgent. But what I'm talking about here is those times when you're like, you know what? I really need to take this time for myself. I really need to take a step back. I really need to kind of lower these expectations. I really need to take care of myself in this way. I really need to say no to this because I see that I am getting overly stressed, that I'm getting burnt out, that I'm not feeling good, that I'm getting more irritable and more snappy and that I'm just feeling just bad. And then being like, oh, well, I'll do it anyways. Oh, well, I don't want to disappoint anyone. Oh, well, I got to follow through. Oh, well, I got to make this happen. Oh, well, you know, everyone else needs me. Instead of being like, you know what? Sometimes I need me. Sometimes I need me to look out for me. Sometimes I need me to take care of me. Yes, there are other people in my life and in relationships that I'm invest, invested in and involved in. And I'm going to contribute to those. I'm going to give to those. I'm going to be present in those. But I also need to be giving to myself because I matter in this equation as well. It's not all about me, but it's not never about me. So listening to what you need for your mental health, for your physical health, for your well-being, what's important to you, and are you paying attention to that? Which sometimes means that we means that we need to say no, and we need to learn how to get better at saying no. For some of you, it's a struggle to say no because you're like, ah, I don't want to be rude, or I don't know how to say it in a way that's going to be received well. Um, so I have a list for you of 25 ways to say no. It's free, and they are kind ways to say no, but also clear. For those of you who really do struggle with that, you can get that free download. The link is in the description. Part of taking care of yourself means that you need to learn how to be okay with saying no when you need to. 
and listening to when you need to by listening to what you need. The next thing that builds self-love is to be mindful about how you talk to and about yourself. You don't realize how often you're making little comments or even overt statements that are self-rejecting, self-defeating, self-critical. Ugh, you're such an idiot. Ugh, what's wrong with you? Oh my gosh, you're so pathetic. Ugh, why can't you get anything right? Ugh, why can't you do this? Why are you never good enough? Whatever that is, how often are you assaulting yourself with your own words? If someone was to say those things to you, it would be like, that's an, that's, a, that's an emotionally abusive relationship. But yet we say those things to ourselves. Ugh, why are you so gross? Right? I would hope that if you had someone in your life that was treating you that way, that you wouldn't stick around. But we treat ourselves in those ways. And then we wonder why we don't feel good enough. We wonder why we don't love ourselves. We don't wonder why we don't feel good about ourselves. So being mindful, how you talk to and about yourself matters. Now, it's not about going around and being like, I'm God's gift to humanity. And like, I'm amazing. I'm the best thing in this world. That's not it. But it's really about cutting yourself some slack and be like, you know what? I messed that up, but I'm going to try again. This is not a reflection of my self-worth. This was perhaps not a great decision, or I didn't go about this in the best way, or I did the best I could and it didn't go the way that I wanted. Whatever, I'm gonna try again, or I'm gonna figure this out, but I'm not gonna beat myself up and I'm not gonna be terrible to myself. Or even if you like snap at someone or get angry at your partner or yell at your kids, you're not gonna be like, oh, I'm a horrible human being. You're gonna be like, wow, not my finest moment. Don't wanna make that a habit. Wanna kind of get curious about what's going on so that I'm not doing that. I wanna work through that. But it's not like, oh, I'm a horrible human being. You're, you know, waste of space because you can't be in full control of your emotions every second of every day, which I've yet to meet a human who can. But I'm just saying, being mindful about how you talk to and about yourself. You might not think anyone is listening, but again, your brain is, and it's really hard to love someone who is verbally abusing us. And it's essentially what you are doing. So being more compassionate with yourself, being more kind towards yourself, being more understanding towards yourself. It doesn't mean that you're going to tell yourself that you do everything right all the time and there's, you know, nothing to learn and nothing to grow and nothing to work through, but you're not going to make yourself feel like a terrible human being because of it. Yeah? Be mindful of how you talk about yourself. It matters. The next thing that helps to build self-love is to do things that you're scared of. Now, I'm not saying do things that you're scared of that are going to, you know, end up in your ultimate death and demise. <laughs> but things that you're like, I want to do this and I've been wanting to do it. I've been wanting to go back to school. I've been wanting to start this side business or I've been wanting to join this organization or I've been wanting to train for a half marathon or whatever that is. I've been wanting to reach out to those people, you know, those 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 girls, those guys that I met at this thing, because I think they're kind of neat. And I want to get to know them better. And I want to just like, or, you know, reach out to them and see if they want to get together. Or maybe it's just one person you're like, you know, I kind of connected with this person. and I kind of want to build that friendship or see if that could be a friendship. I'm going to reach out to them. But, you know, I want to reach out to them, but I'm kind of scared. Right? All these things that are not actual threats to our existence, just perhaps threats to our ego if they don't turn out the way that we want them to. And then we stop ourselves from doing them which tells us I can't handle it. I'm not resilient. I'm not resourceful. I can't do it, right? And it's really hard to feel good and confident about someone who is always like, you can't do it. You don't have what it takes. You're not good enough. They're not going to like you. You're going to be rejected. You're going to fail, right? It's really hard to love someone or to feel good about someone who is always talking to us in those ways instead of being like, you know what? I don't know how this is going to turn out, but I'm going to go for it. And I'm going to do my best and I'm going to put myself out there and I'm going to let myself be vulnerable and I'm going to pick myself up if I fall. I'm going to catch instead of kick myself if I go down. So showing yourself that you can challenge yourself, that you can step out. And that actually builds our relationship with ourselves because if we step out, 
we are showing ourselves that like, I believe in you enough to kind of take this risk or put yourself out there like this or give this a try. And then if it doesn't go exactly how we were expecting or it's more challenging or, you know, more difficult than we were hoping for, but we continue to persist and to keep going and to get back up if we fall, again, that builds our relationship with ourselves because we're like, I believe in you and you can do this and you're not going to let this you know, you're not going to let this roadblock stop you or completely throw you off. You are going to keep going, which then when we are encouraging ourselves, encouraging ourselves and continuing to get back up, to continue to challenge ourselves and kind of push it, not so much that you're like doing something that's like so hard that it's like almost traumatic to put yourself out there in this way, but like little bits of stretching is how we grow. And when we see ourselves growing, we feel better about ourselves. We like ourselves more when we are growing and participating and actively involved in our lives. And we get to be proud of ourselves, which helps us to, again, love ourselves more. The next thing that will help you to start loving yourself today is to take responsibility for yourself, for your life, and for your choices. This can be a tough one. Now, I'm not saying taking responsibility for things that you've been through or how other people have treated you. And the truth is we don't always have control over our circumstances, but we do always have choices within them. And if we are, you know, saying like, it's too hard, I can't do it, the whole world is against me, there's no point, right? Or whatever that is, if we're just like kind of getting in that mindset, you can if you want to. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person if you think that way. It's just not going to really help you feel good about yourself or help you move forward in life if that's important. But if you're like, I don't want to move forward in life, I just kind of want to sit here and feel terrible and think about all the things that are terrible. If that's what you want, you get to do that. No one gets to tell you how you are supposed to live your life and how you're supposed to spend your time or what thoughts you're supposed to think. There's not supposed to. It's just what outcome do you want and what does it take to get that outcome? And so taking responsibility for yourself and your life and for your choices and not blaming everyone else right? And not giving the responsibility for your life to other people is going to help you build your relationship with our, with yourself. So what is it that you want in your life? How do you want your life to be with, with, when it comes to within the things that are within your control that you have say over? Are you getting in the driver's seat of your life? Are you making things happen that you want to have happen? Are you letting yourself step up and step into your life in the ways that are important to you? Or are you making excuses? Are you holding yourself back? Are you, you know, staying hidden? Or are you taking responsibility for what you want in your life and doing what you need to do to make that happen? Not that you have to, you don't have to do anything, but it's what do you want? And what are you willing to do to create that? Nobody else is going to ever be as invested in your life and your well-being than you are. Because nobody else is going to be as impacted by your life and your well-being as you are. And they're not supposed to be. Knowing that what you want is always going to be most important to you. So therefore, it's up to you to create that, to build that, to grow that, to work towards that, to have that, and taking responsibility for that, for your life in the short time that we're here. Building our relationship with ourselves, building our self-love is rooted in self-trust. Like any solid relationship, we have to trust in order to build that safety, in order to let ourselves be open to love. And so same within ourselves, the foundation of self-love is self-trust. And I have a guide on the simple steps to self-trust that's going to walk you through how to build that foundation of self-trust that's going to make it so much easier for you to love yourself and to show up fully as yourself, feeling good about yourself, 
so you don't have to be always focused on yourself. <laughs> You can get that simple steps to self-trust that is in the description. And then also that free guide of 25 ways to say no, if that's something you struggle with, grab that. That is in the description below. Would love to hear your biggest takeaways. Let me know in the comment section below. It is always good to have you here. And until next time, take good care.